G'day viewers, Lazy Australian here with another video review. Today we're looking at the Razorblade 14 inch gaming notebook. That's an absolute bad boy. My cup of coffee's ready, the notebook's ready. I hope you're ready. Let's get into it. Uh, hey guys, I hope you're strapped in because this is going to be a wild ride. Uh, this Razorblade 14 inch gaming notebook is uh, an absolute monster. It's sex in aluminium. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, think of any other exciting adjective that you like and the razor blade is it. Um, there's no comparing this notebook to anything else in the market um, in terms of its size, its styling, its power, and its absolute perfection at what it does, and that is uh, play games. So the, the styling, um, it's obviously been compared uh, to uh, the, the MacBook series um, from, from Apple, um, but Apple can't hold a candle to the performance uh, that, that's uh, packaged within the same form factor as one of their MacBooks. Um, while a MacBook's fine if you're doing spreadsheets or mucking around with iTunes, uh, watching YouTube or, um, or watching movies at, at home, um, try to play a game on a MacBook and uh, the comparison between any MacBook and this um, is, it's not comparable actually, you just, you just can't compare the two. So uh, without any further ado, let's um, take you over what you get for your money. You're basically getting a, a notebook that has the same uh, DNA or styling cues a Razer adapted across all of their products. You can compare that to the Razer Edge, which is on a previous review of mine. The exact same sort of DNA in terms of the identity they're creating. It's like a BMW grill um, is being fed across all of their lines. Just a nice, um, very subtle change in contour across the edges. The edge-to-edge -edge aluminium, the nice rounded edges here. And that they're, it's actually a pleasure to touch and, and hold. It is a little bit um, uh, fingerprint magnety but uh, you get over that very, very quickly uh, the first time that you fire up Battlefield 3 and you experience just an absolute uh, amazement about what they've managed to cram into this. So let me take you over the outside of the, 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 the notebook first. You get your Razer uh, logo that illuminates when the, the screen's up, so I'll, sh so I'll show you that in a tick. On the front here, um, you have a single LED light to give you a status. Um, and you also have um, just a nice bevel here to help you get the screen open like so. Um, on the very left hand side of the notebook you get yourself power connector, two USB 3 and an integrated uh, headphone and mic jack. The rear of the notebook is completely bare, just uh, the hidden hinges. And then on the right hand side you've got a third USB 3 hub, uh, HDMI out and uh, Kensington lock. Underneath the notebook you see something uh, very very different when you compare it to uh, other notebooks on the market. Instead of having feet on the corners or little, little feet pads all over the place, you've got two large uh, feet ducts. I'll call them. Um, th these are rubber, they run from edge to edge and they give you uh, three or four millimetres of, of clearance here, which is very, very important. The way that this notebook keeps itself cool is it has two fans that are sucking air from under the notebook and then blowing it up um, out uh, behind and in front of the screen. And the reason they need to do that is um, they haven't got the room in this notebook uh, like they do on the Asus G73 to have great big exhaust fans uh, on the back of the notebook. So they need to create a clearance here so that clear air can be drawn, drawn through and then blown out. And the, and the way that they do that is they create this great big uh, the tunnel here which gives it enough clearance to suck air through. If you're using this in bed or on your lap or on a plane or something with a blanket, you need to make sure, or I would recommend that you try and keep, make sure these vents uh, are able to pull air through them, otherwise you may lead yourself into a situation where the, the notebook heats up very, very quickly. Um, the one thing that Windows need to do is get rid of these crappy stickers. Um, uh, I've got, I haven't got bad eyesight, but I, even it took me five or six goes to get this code right. And then I'm debating whether or not to pull that sticker off and throw it on the power brick or throw it on the box. I'm not too sure yet, but that's discussion for another day. Um, obvious exclusions from the input output ports. Uh, people are raging on the internet about them. 
Uh, no Ethernet port. Um, and the reason they've put no Ethernet port on here is that basically it doesn't fit. Um, if you actually look at the form factor of the, of the notebook, a USB 3 uh, port just fits. And we all know that Ethernet port is a touch thicker and it literally would not fit. Um, they could have gone with one of those new things that with it extends down when you plug something into it, but in my opinion, that's just begging for something to, to break and snap off when it's kicking around your notebook bag or when you're pulling it at the airport in a hurry and trying to get it back in. That's one of the things that can catch and just get ripped off the, 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 the notebook. So um, I'm, I'm glad they didn't do it. I've got an Ethernet port to USB 3 adapter, um, which if I need to use a, 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 a hard line, I can plug that in and use that, no problems. Likewise, there's, there's no VGA port. They've just given you the HDMI, um, a VGA port. There's no way that that's going to fit in this, in this chassis, so um, I've got no qualms about that. And again, I've got a HDMI to a VGA adapter to keep me out of trouble if I need to plug into an older generation of monitor or TV. Um, I, there's also no Thunderbolt port. Um, if you're keeping up with things, uh, it looks as if USB 3 is slowly killing thun, uh, the Thunderbolt ports, but time will tell. Um, I don't have any Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt uh, devices or anything else like that, so um, that's not a big omission for me, and it's something I don't really care about anyway. Uh, what I'll do is now open it up and show you inside, and just look at that keyboard. Um, there is zero flex in that. It's running one piece aluminium all the way across. That's not a keyboard insert like what other manufacturers do. We have a nice, other manufacturers give you a nice aluminium or magnesium body. And then this keyboard is actually an insert made out of plastic. So it's a separate component. No, not Razor. I'm gonna give you aluminium edge to edge and the keys are gonna be built into that. Um, so there is zero flex. The keys uh, and this keyboard are the best uh, keyboard I've ever come across in a notebook. Um, likewise, the trackpad is the best trackpad that has ever been on any Wintel platform ever before. Um, although the buttons do feel a little bit uh, loose. Now, I know why they didn't do them tight because other manufacturers come under a lot of fire for having the, the keys, uh, the, the, the mouse buttons feel very, very tight and people, especially gamers, think that that's um, not giving them the right performance. Um, but there is a little bit of clackety clackety on these, but they do respond very, very well. So I've got no qualms about that at all. Uh, one of the other things coming under flack on some of the review sites, uh, there's no document navigation keys like home and end. There actually are, they're just not marked. You just use the function key and the left arrow for home, function key and right arrow for end. So there's a few little nicks and knacks that you need to come to grips with if you're going to use this as a, as a work PC or a, or a document writing PC. Um, but a single focus is on gaming and everything else is secondary, so that I can respect. The single power button is up here uh, under Windows 8. You can program that to uh, hibernate, sleep, shut down or restart. And on the side here, you have the two speaker grills, uh, the box and all of the, the marketing materials from Razer say that these are Dolby certified. They do sound nice. There's not very much bass, I can tell you that right now, but the sound that does come out of them is uh, crystal clear. So that's very, very nice. The screen itself, is coming under a little bit of flack. Uh, I say a little bit of flack, a lot of flack by the larger community. Razer have implemented a, an older generation of technology uh, into the screen. And again, the, 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 the Apple fanboys are comparing this to the MacBook and saying, oh, the retina display kills this. Uh, yes, it does. Uh, there's no doubt about that. But uh, the usage situation for a MacBook is very different uh, than, a, than a gaming notebook where uh, as a gamer you tend to be sitting directly in front of the notebook so the viewing angles are less important so they can kind of get away with having a, uh, a, an inferior quality screen. Uh, do I love the screen? No, I don't love the screen. Do I hate the screen? Really, I don't hate it because it does the job okay. Um, they've, and that's, that's it. It does the job okay. The colours are nice. Um, they are boosting uh, the brightness uh, uniformly across, so you get um, uh, whiter whites, brighter colours, but also the blacks tend to be uh, a bit on the bright side. Um, 
you get a camera and there's a microphone up here as well. Um, I very rarely use the camera apart from uh, Skyping with a demon when, when I'm overseas or she's overseas. So uh, there's not much to say about that. And what we're going to do is uh, take you over a few, middle, few little bits and pieces and then I'll actually turn the camera around and give you a look at how she performed in some games and some other tips and tricks. Um, one thing I will do is show you the power brick. So on my uh, review of the Razor Edge, I did say that the, that the, the Edge's uh, power supply is coming out of flak from people online, and it still is, that it's ugly and big and cumbersome. Um, Razer have either taken that feedback on board or they've evolved the previous generation of, of blade power bricks. Rather than make it big and chunky, they've made it long and slim. So while it is still a large-ish power supply, they kind of disguise the fact uh, by making it look a lot better than what they did on the, on the edge. Still, this is no one and a half kilo power brick um, like I have with the Asus G73 that this notebook uh, replaces, and they've done a really, really good job on that. Um, again, with the Haswell processor, uh, they've been able to, to lean back on the power requirements, so it doesn't need to be uh, pushing like 120 watts like the, the G73 does. Um, speaking of the processor, uh, you get an absolute uh, uh, bonanza of hardware inside this so um, you got plenty of RAM this is a, a version with a 512 SSD which is uh, very very responsive and very fast of course it's a quad core physical CPU which gives you eight logical cores uh, with hyper threading and the piece de resistance is the current generation latest technology from NVIDIA dedicated graphics card that sits alongside the integrated Intel um, GPU, so when you're doing spreadsheets and things, it's automatically using uh, the low power uh, graphics card. As soon as you start to play games, uh, the NVIDIA card kicks up and uh, away you go. You get transported into a, into a different universe of performance, which is something that uh, no MacBook uh, can compete with at, at all. Um, one of the things where this is coming under fire is uh, its thermal properties, how hot it gets. Now, people were complaining about the Razor Edge being hot. Um, in my review, I confirmed to you, uh, it gets warm, gets, gets as we say, toasty, um, but very, very comfortable. Um, the hottest that a Razor Edge gets is the coolest this gets on these cooler areas um, under gaming load. So... Uh, I'll spell it out for you. This gets pretty warm. The coolest areas on this are the same temperature as the, the hottest areas on the edge, and that's in this area's uh, either side of the palm rest. Uh, if I draw your attention to this area up here where the hot air is escaping from the CPU and the graphics card, it gets bloody hot. Now, I read some reviews before mine arrived, and I thought, oh, it's just people being girls. Uh, they're, they're just complaining like they always complain that it's probably a bit warm and it's not super hot but I'm telling you right now it gets bloody hot I've got chef's fingers and I can only put my finger there for about 5 or 6 seconds before it's uncomfortably uncomfortably hot and that is like skin burning hot so uh, be warned um, but that's one of the prices you pay for performance I guess it's not as if you like you rest your hands up here when you're using the PC um, but it does get very, very warm. So warm, I think you could probably cook an egg. Um, what else to show you? Let's show you how thin this is by comparison to some other devices. So, Razor Blade 14 inch. Razor Edge. The Razor Edge, uh, it's the, the extruded screen, which is the difference in, in thickness, um, which probably counts for three or four millimeters. So, this is awesome, this is awesome, job done. Compare the Razer Blade to an iPad. This is the Demon's iPad in its protective case. Exactly the same thickness. To think that they can get quad-core Haswell processor, NVIDIA graphics card, SSD of 512 gig, and a whole big chunk of RAM, and a 14 inch screen into the same thickness as an iPad, is it's amazing it is absolutely amazing now let me compare the blade to what the blade replaces which is the asus g73j 
and I can't even describe to you the difference in weight for one. And if I turn this around and lift the screen, the thickness of the screen itself is the thickness of the 14 inch blade. It, in terms of performance, form factor, weight, and uh, quality of manufacturing and, and that textural feel that you get out of, out of a device, the blade is the best thing that has ever, ever been so far. Um, I love this. It's been my companion uh, at work when I'm travelling and at home for a, a, a couple of years now. Um, but I, I hate to tell you, Asus, your time is finished. There's a new kit on the block and it's the, the, the razor blade. And uh, it's as simple as that. The Venoms, the Alienwares, the Gigabytes, all these manufacturers have to be looking at this notebook and thinking, geez, Razor have really pulled one uh, over our eyes because I don't know how they're going to move forward when Razor are giving you better performance than this in a form factor that is thinner and smaller and more accessible than even their, their lightweight business Ultrabooks. And that's very, very, very telling. What we're going to do now is uh, I'll to move the camera around and we'll go through and play some Battlefield, play some Eve and look at a few other things and um, give you a really, really in-depth look about how she performs under load. Thanks, guys. Right, here we are, guys. I've moved this, the camera around. We'll, we'll do a quick uh, reboot cycle so you can get a, a feel for how quick she, uh, she reboots and you'll be very, very surprised. So here we go. One, two, three, restart. Hardware off. Hardware on. And we're up. So very, very impressive reboot performance. I know that Windows 8 uh, does some tricks to make things uh, boot faster, uh, but nevertheless, I compare this to my desktop uh, running Windows 7, and again, that's a pretty that's a pretty impressive rig. Uh, this is lightning fast. Uh, it's really really good. Uh, I'll log into the PC and show you some uh, some some more stuff now. All right, here we are, guys. We're on the desktop uh, Windows 8. I've got Start 8 installed, so it's really uh, like a Windows 7 experience. Um, as you can see from the applications I've got installed, uh, this is a, a PC I use for more than just playing games. Uh, I do a lot of video editing, a lot, uh, a lot of coding and some other bits and pieces. So um, it's not optimised for gaming, so this is like a, a true real life uh, benchmarks and things you'll see. Um, and you'll be very, very impressed I'm sure. One of the things I'll do quickly is uh, set up an FTP session and show you the performance of the of the killer uh, wireless card that's in it. Um, I'm very happy with the, with the throughput and performance. I've got this connected into a Cisco uh, Wi-Fi access point, which is connected to a Cisco uh, small business uh, gigabit switch, and then I've got that plugged into a QNAP with dual gigabit ports uh, running a uh, teaming. So. Uh, we should get some very, very good performance, and I'll show you that quickly now. All right, guys, you can see I've got uh, Qt FTP up, uh, which is a really good uh, tool for testing the, the the speed at which stuff can get sucked through. Um, I'm connected into the QNAP, and I'm just going to download um, an install file from TechNet, uh, which I've got stored locally. So here we go, 404 megs, download. Um, Qt FTP is telling me I'm running 61 megabits uh, so for half a gig it's probably about 50 seconds and that's uh, working out to be roughly true um, while that's downloading I'll quickly take you over how awesome the keyboard is the font that they've selected is amazing and it really sets it apart from other business notebooks or, or other notebooks on the market which uh, have that same old tired um, traditional font on the keys. Razor have changed things up and that font just looks really, really mad. And the, the, the brightness of the, the backlighting can be controlled through the, through the Razor application and um, they've done a really, really good job on that. Um, I can't stress to, again, how awesome the keyboard feels and um, 
you really notice a difference after a full day of doing coding or typing or documents. So there we go, uh, QFTP is saying roughly 62 megabits down, 53 seconds to, to grab um, 404 megabytes. So very, very impressive speeds. The, the, there's no complaining about the, the, the nick in this. Um, it's doing a really good job. Um, the top performance that I'm ever going to get out of the, the Cisco um, uh, access point that I have, um, it's rated at 100 megabits. Um, and we all know that you, you lose some and all the bits and pieces. So 62 megs out of that is, is, is really, really good. It wasn't cached or anything. You can see it all directly running straight off the, off the QNAP. Um, I am playing off access, so don't go too hard on me for um, my performance here in Battlefield 3, but here we go, we'll fire it up, and uh, I'll cut the camera here and show you in-game. I am using my G13 Logitech gaming uh, keyboard and a Naga mouse. As you can see, no question at all that the graphics card and the, the hardware inside the PC can run current generation games. I could go through like I did with the Edge and take you th over all the different games that I have, but it's a waste of time. You, you see what it does in, in Battlefield with the settings that, the, the, that are running, and um, there's no question that uh, it's easily handling with um, anything current generation. Now. One of the things that does help it is that it is running a 1600 screen and not 1920. Um, but again, that smarts from Razer. Um, the, they've got it run with the, the, like the current generation, but on the lower end of the performance of the NVIDIA graphics cards, so they can get the right thermal and power usage properties. Um, they make that with a screen that uh, does the job well at a resolution that gamers are going to find more than acceptable. And you get a very, very powerful combination. Um, I'll just do a play, show you a couple of minutes um, of, or a couple of, couple of brief sections out of a, the same map but playing from the other side uh, to get you a feel because um, when you're coming from the other direction there's um, slightly more vista to see and might tax the graphics card a little bit harder. You can get a, a much better view about what's going on. All right, again, guys, uh, just like on the edge, uh, here's Eve, different type of game to Battlefield 3. Um, it's a spaceships and an internet lasers game. Um, again, solid 60 FPS, and that's the that's how Eve sort of maxes out here. Uh, jump in a ship. Just like on, jump in a command ship. 
undock. Again, 60 FPS in space, so no complaints at all about the performance in EVE. As it undocked then, uh, you heard the fan spin up. That's about as loud as they go. Uh, it's not like a tornado or anything like that when the when the graphics card's under pressure. Um, it handles the uh, the thermal load very very well. It's usually you can't even you don't even notice it, especially if you've got earphones on or the or the game's making noise. Uh, you definitely cannot uh, the 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 fans don't interfere with the gameplay at all. So just really really good. And again, if I can spin this around, I can do whatever I want to do. Um, there is no problems with the FPS drops, even high detail, close range, nothing. It's fine. So we'll dock it up. And I'll flick you into another game. Again, guys, uh, European escalation, just like I showed you on the edge. And look at this constant 60 FPS constant in here amongst all this trees everything everything's alive everything's moving just insane. Usually when you zip through the trees and stuff it drops FPS but not a worry. Look, solid 60. And as I said before, the um, there's really no reason to take you over all these other games because uh, it's just eating all this alive. Uh, not a question of performance at all. Look. So we'll take you to the desktop. There we are guys, so that's the, the Razer Blade 14 inch gaming notebook in all of its glory. I'll just give you a quick view about what happens with the screen when you're, when you're off the, the perfect angles. So, there we go. It's just as good as any notebook I've ever had in the past. Um, so, I've got no complaints really about that. It's not fantastic, but it's not bad either. Um, one thing before I sort of sign off. Here's the battery indicator. We're 97% charged because I was running it um, off the battery before. Pull the power cable out. 97% um, remaining. And I have got this to five hours off charge. Um, doing stuff at work, serving the internet, uh, doing some YouTube at lunch and the rest of it. And um, very, very, very awesome performance. The other night I did a test playing Battlefield 3, 90 minutes of solid gaming, uh, and I hadn't received a notification message of low battery. I exited Battlefield 3, went in there, and I was still showing about 22% of battery. So that Haswell processor and the amount of juice that they've got, obviously filling in all the gaps uh, in the chassis, is doing a really, really good job in terms of giving you a long time. So five hours of at least five hours of normal usage, 90 minutes of, of, of gaming easily, comparing that to the old Asus G73 where you were lucky to get 65, 70 minutes of desktop usage um, on battery. And if you're playing a game, I'd be, I'd be lucky to get 40, 45 minutes, um, even when it was new. So how far things have come with battery technology, with the Haswell processor, and how much... Um, batteries are obviously squeezed in amongst all these bits and pieces within the chassis. Uh, Rays have done a really, really good job. So I'm a hot tip for you. Thumbs up for this. Go get one. Play all the games you like and enjoy it. And the portability, the powerhouse, the, the practicality of, of having a, a long battery life, a great performance, and all aluminium, ch all aluminium chassis um, is, I'm sure this is going to see me for many years ahead. So with that, signing off. Thanks, guys, and see you on the next video. Bye-bye.